apply the Gram-Schmidt process to find an orthogonal basis for the column space of matrix A. And here we are given the beautiful 3x3 three three matrix A. So the very first thing that we need to do here is find a basis for the column space. So let's recall that the pivot columns of matrix A form a basis for the column space of matrix A. So in other words, we need to row reduce matrix A augmented with the zero vector to echelon form to be able to identify the pivot columns. So here we go, our matrix A. The first column is 0, 1, 1. Our second column is negative 1, 0, minus 1. And the third column is 1, 1, 0. So looking at our first pivot position here, we realize it's a 0. We want a 1. So let's go ahead and interchange this first row with the second row to get a 1 in our first pivot position. So this is row equivalent to the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 0. So now taking our first pivot, we can use it to eliminate the entry below it by doing minus 1 times the first row plus the third row, which produces the equivalent matrix. So our first two rows remain as they are, 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1. Now we have minus 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1, and then negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. So our first column is all set, and we can move to our second pivot position, and we'll use this to eliminate the entry below it. And we can do this by doing minus the second row plus the third row. So this is leaving us with the equivalent matrix. The first two rows remain as they are, 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, and now we have 0, 0, minus 2. And would you look at this? We have attained echelon form, and we can see that there is a pivot position in each of the columns, which allows us to conclude that these column vectors are all pivot columns. So we can say that since matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix, with three pivot positions. This is logically equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A are linearly independent, which is logically equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A span R3. So therefore, a basis for the column space of matrix A is equal to the set of vectors 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and 1, 1, 0. So now that we have a basis for the column space of matrix A, we are officially ready to apply the Gram-Schmidt process to find an orthogonal basis for this column space. So I'm going to go ahead and let vector V sub 1 be equal to the first column of matrix A, vector A sub 1. Now, by the Gram-Schmidt process, we know that vector V sub 2 is going to be equal to vector a sub 2 minus the projection of vector a sub 2 onto vector v sub 1. So this is going to be equal to vector v sub 2, the vector with components negative 1, 0, minus 1, minus, and when we compute this dot product in the numerator, we have 0 plus 0 minus 1, all divided by 0 plus 1 plus 1 and that's multiplied by vector v sub 1. So this will be equal to vector a sub 2, the vector with components, negative 1, 0, minus 1. And now we are subtracting, and notice, simplifying this ratio, we have negative 1 in the numerator by 2, so this is a negative multiplied by a negative 1 half, so we have plus 1 half multiplied by vector v sub 1, which is the vector with components 0, 1, 1. And combining up these like terms, we have negative 1 plus 0 is minus 1. We have 0 plus 1 half, which is 1 half. And then negative 1 plus 1 half, which leaves us with a minus 1 half. Beautiful! So now that we have vector v sub 2, we can again recall that by 
the Gram-Schmidt process, we know that vector V sub 3 is equal to vector A sub 3 minus the projection of vector A sub 3 onto vector V sub 1 minus the projection of vector A sub 3 onto vector V sub 2. So here we go, making sure we have plenty of room. We are ready to compute vector V sub 3. So this is equal to, we have the vector 1, 1, 0. And we are subtracting the first projection. So computing these dot products, we have in the numerator 0 plus 1 plus 0, all divided by 0 plus 1 plus 1, multiplied by vector v sub 1, minus the second projection. So computing these dot products, we have negative 1 plus 1 half plus 0, all divided by a positive 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, and that's all multiplied by vector v sub 2. So simplifying, we have the vector 1, 1, 0 minus the scalar multiple of negative 1 half multiplied by vector v sub 1, which is the vector with components, 0, 1, 1, and then this will be plus the scalar multiple of 1 third multiplied by vector v sub 2, which is the vector with components negative 1, 1 half, negative 1 half. So distributing these scalar multiples through and combining up those like terms, we are left with the vector with components 2 thirds, 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds. And we are officially ready to make our final conclusions that by the Gram-Schmidt process, an orthogonal basis for the column space of matrix A is defined by the set of vectors 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative 1 half, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, making this our beautiful final answer. Now keep this example in mind because we're going to come back to this and use this with the RQR factorization.